Hey, this is GearFit Hunter with a review for the Amazfit Stratus 3. We're going to look at a few of the basics, you know, just the, I'm going to share just the overview of just the basics about the watch. We're going to look at a hands-on and look at the app, see how that experience looks like, and then come back for a summary and just basic thoughts and recommendations. So as always, if you like the video, please give it a thumbs up and please consider subscribing. Lots of other videos and reviews coming in the upcoming weeks. And as always, I'm focused on watches that help you develop your fitness in a more in-depth capacity, plus track and train alongside CrossFit or high intensity interval training or cross training types of things versus all the other running, biking, and otherwise types of videos, uh, reviews that are out there. Um, so this watch comes in at $199 and it is pretty feature packed for $199. Um, it's 48 millimeters wide by 13 and a half millimeters thick. It only weighs 62 grams, and we'll talk about that sort of comparing it to some of the others out there. One of the things that's nice about it, it has a 1.32 inch screen, and it's a touch screen. So that's somewhat unique, and even the concentration of the screen quality is, is 320 by 320, which is better than some of the other standard 1.2 inch screens that are out on the market today. It does all tracks, all the same basic stuff. You know, you got your stairs, and because it has a barometric altimeter, which is a main benefit that this has over some of the other watches of its price point is a barometric altimeter so you can get your stair tracking over time it'll actually give you weather you know you can update the weather on there you can see your obviously your heart rate over time it'll track your sleep and we'll get into some of the details about that but what are some of the main features about it that are unique the most important most significant one is that it uses first beat analytics now garmin has bought first beat but first beat still contracts out their algorithms and analytics for tracking the intensity of your workouts recovery time in between workouts that's, for, you know, not requested, but uh, suggested, and the training load over time. So how much load and exertion you're placing on your body over time. So instead of just having some of the stagnant trackers out there, like the Apple Watch or Samsung that just give you your heart rate over time and maybe show your heart rate zones, First Beat brings to the table the fact that you can get an exertion score for your training effect from the workout. And based on the intensity of the workout, coupled with your VO2 max, like how much recovery time is needed and the training load over time. So you can see if you're optimized in your training capacity, if you're hitting it too red, doing too much workouts or not enough based on your fitness level. So that is a big, big thing for a lesser known watch. So Garmin has been the industry leader for First Beat Analytics or using First Beat for analytics and giving you training plan aspects looking at you know the impact of a workout recovery time and training load over time and this is one from a lesser known company at $199 is giving you a lot of the same thing so we'll look at the basics in a sec in a second so like I said other unique things about it it's a touch screen 1.3 inches 320 by 320 which is a little bit more concentrated um, lighter weight 62 grams comes in at a pretty light weight and We'll look at it and sort of side by side or just you know the app alongside the watch itself. So let's dive into the hands-on and the app and we'll come back for a summary. Okay, so let's look at these sort of side by side. We'll look at the watch first and just break it down. So obviously 43 millimeters across and 13 and a half millimeters. It's really a relatively thin watch. If you go around to the back, you have these two primary optical heart rate sensors. It is a 22 millimeter quick release and the casing feels solid. The actual bezel is ceramic, so that's actually a higher end upgrade, although with the you know polished chrome, I think that's gonna get uh, scratched up. Gorilla Glass 3 on the front, and one of the things that is unique about it is it is touch screen, so you can obviously just control it through the touch screen, but looking at the buttons, it has a unique button layout. So this goes into your apps, this goes back, and this goes up and down. So if you're in the watch and, oh, so that goes into the workouts, you go back with the bottom button. But here you can also control it so that you're seeing all the different primary widgets. One of the things that's really neat is that you can actually control what widgets are available. There's not a laundry list, but you at least have some options about which widgets you can use. So the up and down buttons work fine, and you're obviously you can scroll with the touch screen as well. The backlight is really bright, um, so it can you know you can change the backlight brightness here or in the settings, and you can set the watch wrist raise here. But it works really well for the wrist raise gesture and the brightness when it full bright is 
considerably brighter, about twice the brightness of the average transflective watches on the market today. So it goes brighter than even the Phoenix 6 series goes. Um, so backlight has been great. So overall in using the watch, just to give it a breakdown, because Amazfit is a lesser known company, just to give you some detail on how the watch works or how it feels in the overall experience, keeps wanting me to work out. Um, you swipe to the left and you get your apps. You swipe to the right and you get your notifications. So you go into notification, this is what it looks like. Relatively clear to read, a little bit smaller text. It'd be nice if it was if it was different and you click back out and then you swipe up and down to go through the widgets. So the health widget is a summary of your day. Activities widget, anytime you see this three dots, you can hit here or click on the three dots and it'll take you to your activity log. Same thing here, you can see, well, let's just look at the weather widget now. So you can see what the day, uh, See, there is a slight lag. I do have I have found either with the touch screen or sometimes with the button press, there is a little bit of a lag. So you can scroll back there, scroll up to alarms. You can set a multiple of alarms based on different days of the week, which is great. And the sleep. So it is nice that it has the sleep built into the watch itself. You can track in to see your history over time. But it does give you a little bit of a simplified sleep analysis. We'll look at it more in the app, but you can see it. Music, it does hold music, but it is a problem because the music um, is only MP3 based or just controlling your phone. So it's not as functionally useful as obviously being able to connect with Deezer or Spotify. So I have not used the music and I don't think that I would if I kept the watch. This is your heart rate over time. Obviously you have three dots there so you can click into it and see a broader period or broader, you know, bigger chart rate. A heart rate chart. It does a really good job with charts and we'll see that in the workout breakdown in a second. But heart rate widget and then back to the summary widget. This is your quick jump into the settings. Do not disturb airplane mode and your battery life down here. So all in all, it's just functionally very capable. So when you look at the basic apps, you have the health app, which is just a summary of your activity for the day. The heart rate, which we looked at was that same information off the heart rate widget. Your sports you have your activity log here, and we'll look at that in a second. Went a little too fast. Your exercise status, your weather. Now, exercise status, I'm gonna show you in a second. That is the first beat uh, analytics breakdown. It does have a barometer, which is great for this price point. So you can switch between just the overall pressure as well as the overall altitude in the room, and then back to the app page. So everything really functions, you know, timer, stopwatch, all that basic stuff. You can go to the watch faces and you can find sort of like a watch face store, but there's not a huge list of them there. And then the settings at the bottom. So everything just works really well. And I feel like the apps, although they're very simplified, it is functionally capable. Um, so what does it look like in a workout itself? Well, when you go into not activities yet. So we're going to look at it. What does it look like in a workout? What does it look like after workout when you look at the stats in the watch? So you have just a, a pretty long list of activities and you can go down to the bottom and you can add exercise activities. So and then that jumps you into a much bigger list. No, more exercises. Oh, there it is. So you go in here, you can pick from, you know, you can see four, two, nine outdoor exercises, 16 indoor exercises, dance, combat sports, ball sports, winter sports, and others. So it has a pretty long list of different options for which you can choose. So when you just look at the basics, I just tend to use the indoor fitness. You go into the indoor fitness, and one of the biggest things about the Amazfit watch, Stratus 3, versus some of the other ones from China or from the other companies that are lesser known or not as well distributed in the United States, is that you can connect it to a Bluetooth chest strap. This is fundamentally important for tracking high-intensity interval workouts and CrossFit training. So you just would go into the accessories. I don't have a chest strap on, so it's not going to work. It'll turn the Bluetooth on, and it'll start looking for um, a strap. So this is like a a phantom link to the Polar H10 strap that I've been using for workouts. But it connected just fine. You have to connect it every time. It doesn't auto connect. And look at the display settings. So you can choose whether you have, you know, how many items of display. And the thing I love, you can choose a white background versus a black background. So that's the settings 
you can set activity goals, but the most things we're going to do is just get into a class or get into a workout and just go for it. So when you click into it, I, I think this is awesome. The backlight's great. The white backdrop's great, great. You get your heart rate there, your average heart rate there. This is sort of how I set up the data fields. You don't get a whole long list of different data fields you can use, but I still find it fine. So it's now it's locked, so you have to push this button which obviously will pause the workout, but I do like that you can see the time itself. You can jump into other screens. It keeps the time there, which I, I just I just like. And then you can also get a heart rate meter. So for where you're at in the workout and um, back to the beginning. But again, just all the basic stats are functional things that you might want in a workout. So you pause it there. You can resume, save. You can adjust the brightness right here, but we're just gonna discard. Um, and you, again, I like these sort of side buttons because if you don't want to use the touch screen, or if you're really sweaty, then you just side buttons make for a big difference. Um, all the activities work really well. If you want to get your VO2 max score, you have to run outside for 10 minutes and have to break a heart rate of 130 beats per minute. Um, but it does give you all the specifics. So what does it look like after the workout when you've done an activity? So again, we have three dots here, which means there's a longer list. This is just the most recent CrossFit workout that I did today. It's just sort of an um, altered Annie. So we'll go in and we'll just look at the stats from that. So here's the basic stats you would get on this indoor fitness. The amount of time you can, you know, this bottom button will track your lap times, which is great. And it'll be a stat on the screen you can choose from. Average heart rate your heart rate uh, zones, percentage of time in each zones, total calories, and then a, actually like a really kind of cool chart of your heart rate over time that you would see in the app, but you can also just see in the watch. So we'll go back and I'll show you what a run looked like. This was just a warm up run, just to keep the VO2 max scores in sync with what it needs to have. Um, but you get a bunch more information, pace, cadence, it gives you the numerical values, the speed, altitude, um, calories, heart rate, and then it goes through the picture graphs. There's the training effect screen. It doesn't show you the recovery time impact in the watch, in the workout history, but it does show you obviously in um, the health widget as well as in the app itself. So graph of the heart rate, graph of the pace, graph of the, you know, the body state. This is your performance condition over time, which is a, you know, a first beat analytic stat. Cadence, you know, altitude, and then this is kind of neat, you know, the slope distribution over time, just a graph there. So that's what you see from the workouts themselves, and it all builds so that you have your summary of your fitness development here. So this is the First Beat summary page, and I, I have found it to be great. It's very comparable to the Garmin 245, because on the 945 and on the Phoenix 6, you get a bunch more details to what type of load you created over time. But this just gives you a simple score on where you're at on the, on the graph over the last seven days, your VO2 max, and your last tracking, and your recovery time left from the last workout. So again, all the primary things you would need to track your training and all in a relatively affordable watch. So I didn't run long enough to get a running performance prediction for race predictions, but it has that built in. So really, really useful stuff in a, you know, simple watch. So what does it get in the app? This is what the app looks like when you first jump in. I'm just going to jump through some things. You can click any of these fields and it'll take you to a more detailed page. But looking at it, so you have the training load, the VO2 max, your heart rate, the last workouts, and you can click this little button for all records to see, you know, your history of things, and then the sleep score. So let's look at sleep because yeah, I found this to be the most useless aspect of it. So you can click through the days, and it's just super simple. Deep sleep, light sleep. And it is not getting, you know, so I went to the bathroom last night in the middle of the night, I didn't get that. It basically never gets that. It gives me a, a sleep score, which is nice that it's not just generic data like some of the other providers, but sleep score I haven't felt like is on point with how I really felt from the sleep. So you can actually rec record your you know things that led up to your sleep and how you felt, but it doesn't really translate anywhere in my opinion. Um, so the sleep needs to get better and more detailed. But when you look at it, you know, in the training load aspects, 
you can see your graph over time. Now, obviously I've been testing it for a couple weeks, but you just build your graph and it is relatively spot on with the 945 I've been testing it alongside. So your my training load is the same. My VO2 max is a little bit different than you know what I've uh, for whatever reason just hasn't changed VO2 max than what I'm what I'm getting. One thing you don't get in the app is you don't get um, the recovery time countdown. Like you only get that in the watch, but you can see all your fit. Okay, so I turn the internet back on just so I. I get a lot of messages, so I don't like that to interrupt, but this is what it looks like in the app when you break down a workout. So it's actually, you know, f as fully functional as any of the others. You see your training effect at the bottom, your heart rate zones here, your heart rate chart, and, you know, your summary of the workout. So you can hit this little plus anytime you see a little plus on a graph, whether it's the pace, cadence, any of those things, and you can track, you know, just by across time what your heart rate was for the period of the workout. So it's giving you a full heart rate graph that is trackable and traceable so you can see how it worked, how your hard you worked, I guess, in the workout. So if you look at an outdoor running, again, this is sort of simple or summary. It gives you a, you know, a pretty chart of it. When you get down to the bottom, you can see your pace, your heart rate, again, any of these plus signs, you can dive into those in more detail. Heart rate zones, altitude change, time in different slope, stride training effect the body state again that performance condition as it changed over time and then your pacing so all of the primary stats you would want in tracking so again in each of these you can see the impact of the workout as well as the training effect of the workout and then here's where you see your load and your vo2 max so it doesn't have it in one summary place um, but it does have each of those components primarily and rel relatively easy to find. Here's just sort of a summary of the types of things. There's a lot of things that aren't activated here in the U.S. or aren't on this watch. And then you can go into the watch itself and you can select your watch face. Here's the widget manager where you can choose what widgets you want to have available. So obviously it's not a laundry list of widgets that you can have available to swipe up or down from the watch screen. You can select your watch face and then you can make some adjustments to some of the apps. You can set the, uh, the settings themselves and notification settings you can turn on or off different things. So it is obviously got all the primary component components you would want. Um, in all the basic fitness tracking, especially at the higher level with the first speed analytics. So that's the app. That's the watch. Let's look now at the basics of how I would break it down. Okay, so there it is. What do I think of the watch just all in all, but how does it also compare to some of the other, because a Maze Fit is lesser known in the true sports tracking world or the fitness watches that have more in-depth things to them. Um, so how do I compare, how does it compare to other devices on the market? So it somewhat compares in size and in capabilities to the Polar Grit X or maybe the Polar Vantage M, but let's just focus on the Grit X, for example. So what does it do the same, good or the same? It, it will calculate your load really well, the training effect, which compares to Polar's cardio, um, cardio load from the particular workout. It'll give you weather like the Grid X does, you know, weather widget type thing. It only gives you a summary of the day, so it's not hour by hour, anything like that. But what does it do better? Number one, the screen quality is better. So the screen is 1.3 inches versus 1.2 inches. The pixel density is higher and the backlight is so much better. So if you compare this to most transflective backlights on the, you know, in the field today, you know, 30 lumens is about average. This is coming in at 72 lumens bright. Um, it'll track, you know, versus the Grid X, it'll track your recovery time, which the Grid X doesn't really do. You can do a lot more customization, has a lot more apps and the notifications work. So Grid X, Vantage V, Vantage M, those all had problems with notifications, but the backlight is great. The wrist raise backlight is great. It's been a great experience there overall. What does it do not as good as the Grid X? Well, sleep. So the, obviously the sleep is super basic. It doesn't tie into your recovery. You know, Polar really has an excellent sleep tracking focus or sleep tracking through the nightly recharge. And obviously the Grid X has the hill splitter and, you know, helps you know when to refuel and things like that. But it compares very, very well at $109 compared to 429 or whatever it is for the Polar Grid X. How does it compare to the Garmin 245? Now the 245 is somewhat of a healthy comparison in looking at the stats that you get. 
what are some of the same or good aspects about it? The training, training effect, load recovery, those things are similar. The battery life is similar. GPS is similar. Um, this includes a barometric altimeter, which is not available on the 245. So that leads me just to what are the other better things about it? Well, the screen quality is a little bit better, although it is a little bit more washed out than the 245. The pixel density and the brightness of the screen is considerably better than the 245, just the overall size, brightness, and the fact that it's touch screen. It's a touch screen. Not many other watches are using that on the market. The stats that you can see on the watch for a breakdown of your workout are better. Um, just, you know, visually what you can see, you know, the amount of stats you can get in the breakdown of the workout. It does multi-sport. So the 245 doesn't do multi-sport tracking. So you can run a triathlon or you can set up your own multi-sport and this will track it. And obviously the price in a much less. So what does it do worse than the 245? Well, sleep tracking clearly. Um, this obviously doesn't have a pulse ox, you know, tester, so you don't get any benefits of seeing your oxygen level through the nights. Um, but one thing that Garmin does really well is the body battery. So, a, you know, depletion or regeneration of your body internal resources over the course of the day based on heart rate variability. This doesn't do anything like that. Um, the watch faces are better on the Garmin system. The customization is better on the Garmin systems and the recovery time, especially now with Garmin's new development of recovery time, what's called improved recovery time, takes into account more aspects than just the recovery time needed from the workout itself. So all in all, what do I think? Well, the good about it is it does the training details. It gives you training effect, load, and recovery time from first beat. So high quality analytics in a cheap watch. The usability, the experience of the app and the watch, it's all working well, which I didn't know what to expect from a lesser known company or a company that's not as, not as well distributed in the US. Battery life was great. It coming in at you know, basically four, four and a half days for the you know, number three setting or the 75% setting on the backlight. The apps worked well, everything seemed to work well. I like the workout screen. So the fact you can change from black color to white background and you can see your workout screens, you can set five fields of data. It doesn't have the full list of data you might get on other watches, like choosable options for each data field, but it is fantastic for what we might use it for in high intensity interval training and CrossFit training. What is great about it? The price, obviously the price is fantastic and the overall quality of the build feels fan feels great for the what you're getting and all the analytics that you're getting with it. What does it need to work on? Obviously sleep. There is some lag between, you know, scrolling using the touch screen itself. I like using the buttons because they're more consistent. The watch faces, you know, you could download some watch faces, but here in the US and with an iPhone, you just can't get as access to the full watch face menu. So some of the watch faces I just didn't find to be that great. And then the music capability does have four gigabytes of storage inside, but you can't really, you know, you obviously have to download MP3s, which MP3 is just sort of a lost thing. But all in all, it's an incredible device for the price. I would say if you could afford the Garmin 245, you definitely should go with the Garmin 245 because of the health and wellness, sleep and body battery because this is just lacking in sleep and obviously doesn't have body battery. But as far as a great watch at a great price for you know, alternative type workouts, high intensity interval training, even for running, it has a lot of the same specs and aspects that you would get in the running aspects of the Forerunner 245. So the running does excellently there too in all the stats that you get from a running workout. And it even has a little bit more enhanced things from what I have seen on the 945 when doing running. So all in all, definitely a thumbs up, definitely a great watch to consider. Again, this is the Fit Gear Hunter. Thanks so much for watching.